So this summer, I did many challenging but really, really rewarding things, and one of those was making a German Renaissance gown. So like a lot of things I do, I didn't have exactly a pattern for this, so I used the bodice of the Simplicity Tudor style gown and the sleeves of the McCall's uh, patterns to kind of assemble a semblance of a pattern, and then I drafted some of my own patterns and used some blog posts. Um, that were also really helpful, and I will link the helpful blogs uh, below in the description box. I kind of fudged around with the bodice patterns a little bit as well, and as you can tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be focusing on the bodice today, and part two about the sleeves and the skirt will be coming out later. So the way I did the bodice was I used the back piece from the Simplicity pattern, I used a side piece, and then I kind of embellished the side piece to come more around the front using the site that I have linked in the description box, which is basically uh, free patterns for 16th century German Renaissance gowns, which if you Google that, uh, it comes like right up right away. It's great, very helpful. So that's kind of what's happening here. Um, I'm <laughs> looking at that and also trying to like use my measurements to create a semblance of a bodice. One of the more challenging elements about this gown is that um, I really wanted it to be velvet, but I don't have a lot of, you know, a lot of money, and velvet costs a lot of money, so I ended up finding upholstery velvet for like three dollars a yard which I could afford um, yeah so this dress is going to be it's, it's made of upholstery velvet which is incredibly thick and difficult to work with and provided a lot of challenges yeah it was yeah mm. yeah it, it, it I bent sewing needles I broke sewing needles trying to do this hand stitching and machine sewing um, I would not recommend but, you know, if you are up for a challenge and just are stubborn like me, uh, go for it. So, this was also kind of nerve-wracking um, as well to cut out patterns, because cutting out patterns is always kind of um, scary, because um, once you cut it, it's cut. Um, especially when you're trying to like draft your own pattern, it's even more scary. So, I, I drafted it a little big, because at that point, like, you can always cut off pieces um, it's hard to sew on pieces and make it look nice of course like piecing is period and all that but um, I just prefer to make it a little bigger and then like trim down uh, but I really didn't need to do that because thankfully my measurements uh, came out but I couldn't tell Marie in uh, who was cutting this that of course I have help from the most helpful of sewing helpers to lay out my lining because like I said upholstery velvet and I didn't want that against my skin so I just use some normal cotton lining fabric this isn't really it's a historically inspired dress I would not call it historically accurate as I am using upholstery velvet but it looks very similar to the uh, painting that you saw at the beginning of this video that was my inspiration so, yeah, I like, yeah, <laughs> if, if you're going for historically accurate, uh, using upholstery velvet and cotton for a renaissance dress is not the way to go, but it looks like it, it's, you know, historically inspired, and that's kind of what I was going with. Basically, I wanted to create a pretty dress that I could wear around in Oxford and take pictures in to kind of celebrate the fact that I was getting to go on this amazing study abroad experience um, so it was kind of like a little like treat like a little celebration dress for myself because I just wanted to go frolic around historic places in Europe while looking and feeling like a princess uh, which you will see later I, I, I accomplished my goal but mm, okay enough of me rambling back to cutting out patterns I also might wear this to a Ren Faire one day, we'll see. If if it's ever cool enough for me to wear to a Ren Faire, because like I said, upholstery velvet. Uh, 
All right, so once I got the lining attached to my bodice pieces, it was time to attach the body piece, blah, 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 bodice pieces together. So yeah, that was pretty easy, pretty simple. Trying to sew the two pieces of velvet together was challenging. Uh, like I said, some bent and broken needles were involved, but we got it together and that is what matters. So here I'm just pinning my, basically my front to my back, uh, which is pretty self-explanatory. I then went ahead and attached tuck and eye tape to the back. Um, apparently for 15th century dresses, because, well, I know this is not historically accurate. I'm trying to make it, like, quote unquote, historically as accurate as I possibly can with the materials that I am using. But apparently, um, from what I can tell, there are no. There are none of these, like, dresses left in existence, so all we have are paintings, which I have compiled a whole Pinterest board full of, I will also link that in the description box if you care to go see. Like, so there, there's no real original garment, so trying to figure out how people got into these, uh, it, we don't, we aren't exactly, um, positive. So I just decided to sew hook and eye tape up the back, cause I was trying to make this in like a week before I left to go, because I'm always sewing at the last minute, cause that's just how I roll, apparently. That's my mode of operation. Um, and I have a lot of hook and eye tape. Hook and eye tape is my best friend. What came next is the center front of my bodice. So, I have this really pretty kind of brocade material, which was um, amazing. If you want to hear more about that, you can go see my summer fabric haul video where I got this fabric. Um, it, it looks almost exactly like the painting that I wanted to do. Also, if you want to hear more about like my plans and all that for uh, this dress, kind of like my project announcement, quote unquote, you can go back and see my summer fabric haul video, which I will put at the end of this video. As well so I wanted to make sure it was nice and stiff so I put some oh, what do you call that uh buckram buckram I used buckram because I have a giant roll of buckram in my basement so I decided to go ahead and put some buckram in the top of my uh, in the center front of my bodice so that it kind of looked like I had a corset because also I had no room in my suitcase I had like zero room in my suitcase that's why we have this instead of a Tudor gown. Anyway, I have a little conspiracy theory as to why a German Renaissance dress would be in England during that time, so stay tuned to hear my conspiracy theory. Um, but yeah, I took a lot of cheats with this. It's more, it's, it's really more of a costume, but it looks like the painting, and that's what I was going for. I also was trying to like conserve so I wasn't on room in my suitcase, so I don't really have any of the right underpinnings or corsets or stays or anything. So yeah, it's a little bit of a hot mess, but I think it turned out okay. <laughs> so here is the bottom part of the center part of my bodice, and it has lacing on it. Uh, uh, it you can see in the... the uh, dip, 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 the painting, the painting. You can see in the painting it has like lacing on it. I had no idea if that was functional or decorative because it's a painting and I can't see the actual garment. So I decided that it was decorative. So I just used some ribbon and just kind of tacked it to that bodice piece and uh, that's, that's how we were. It has like a zigzag uh, weave to it. So that's fun.
I then stitched the top and the bottom part of my center bodice together using a nice little lip stitch. I decided to hand sew that part. Um, a lot of the other parts are machine sewn because I don't ever leave time to do things. And yeah, I just, I don't leave time to do things. I then inserted the um, center bodice piece into the bodice and it, it, it looked good and it looked like the painting and that's all I really could ask for at that point. So stay tuned, part two about the sleeves and the skirt are coming next week and also check out my Instagram which is linked down below in the description box to hopefully see more pictures because I will update my Instagram with pictures as these videos come out as well. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>